This is episode 91 of Off Script with Trish Close, intimate interviews and fun conversations with interesting people. In front of my mic today, not really in front of my mic, but via Skype, I have Chad Brown. He is a pediatric and adult psychiatrist with uh, Path to Awareness. Is that right, Chad? That's correct. Okay, and you're joining us via Skype. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, I reached out to you uh, basically wanting to talk about the state of our mental health right now amid the COVID-19 chaos is what I've been calling it. Um, we're gonna get into a lot of that. I have some questions from some listeners for you. But first, let's talk about you just a little bit. Um, when did you become interested in becoming a psychiatrist? Um, during medical school, during my uh, psychiatric rotation, I started to really get feel like that was just my where I was supposed to be and what I was supposed to be doing in in regards to medicine. Okay, I know I'm um, reading on your website, you said you became interested in medicine when you yourself became a patient. Yeah, that's well, right. With mm -hmm. What were you finding? Well, I was I was in the military at the time and I was having a lot of uh, GI issues and I didn't really know what was going on and they really didn't weren't able to provide me with the with the care I think I needed and the evaluations that needed they kind of just pushed it all off as as you know something wrong with my my gut but they didn't do anything but give me ibuprofen and um, Imodium AD and so I kind of was frustrated with that and I that kind of pushed me towards uh, medicine and then uh, decided to, when you know, once I got into medical school, and started to realize how much anxiety I had, and and how how it 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 you know just manifested in somatic symptoms, and and then you know doing my psychiatric rotations, I just found that I connected with people. I liked I liked the the longer time I could spend with people and to to really get to know them better than, you know, short visits in a primary care physician's office. And so I just felt like that was a, the thing for me. And, and I'm glad I chose that. It's, it's mm -hmm. been an amazing experience, a lot of uh, ups and downs throughout the process, but um, I really, this is where I'm supposed to be. Awesome. And what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, you, um, within, on your website also about you, you say you try to integrate both Western and Eastern medicine in your practice. And it sounds like that's been your path. That's what's really been working for you. Yeah, I, I you know, for me, myself, I've, I've gone, I've gone the Western medicine path for my, my own anxiety and my own mental health issues. And they've helped some for sure. And, but integrating uh, mindfulness practice um, has really, really been key for me uh, mm -hmm. with my anxiety. When did you start uh, Path to Awareness? I think I started that back in 2013. Okay. And that's Medford based, correct? Yeah, it was Grants Pass in Medford at the beginning and then uh, shifted over to Medford for um, just better for me and my family to be in one location. Okay. And I just want to um, read, again, I got a lot of really good information just from your website, but if, if you'll humor me, I want to read a little bit of your mission, our mission with, with Path to Awareness. Instill hope when all appears to be lost through developing an understanding of one's own path and purpose. Realize how one relates to the world around them through their own unique perspective. Help guide individuals to a place of inner validation and forgiveness for themselves and others. Be present to help facilitate the beginning or continuation of seeing one's own experience as it's unfolding in the moment. Help to experience the beauty around us instead of being constantly distracted by repetitive thoughts of the past and future. Boy, does that hold a lot of weight right now. It holds a lot of weight. I haven't read that in, in over two years, probably. <laughs> well, there you go. I, I just read it for you. <laughs> I should probably reread that weekly. I mean, that's good stuff, Chad. That, that, that made me feel really good this morning, reading that. Let's, and that maybe be a good segue right now. Let's move into the emotional state. Um, I know, I'm just gonna speak for myself. I have moments of anxiety. I have uh, just experienced a little 
moment of a brief depression where I just felt a little lost. Um, and then I have moments of clarity and super insane positivity where I just feel like I can conquer the world. Is this normal? And I, I'm looking at your t-shirt right now that says it's okay to not be okay. That's told, this is totally normal. I mean, even, even for people who, it, well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, but I, I mean, people who don't suffer from debilitating anxiety, depression every day are now experiencing what, you know, what some of my patients experience on a daily basis mm. when there's not a, a pandemic. And so it, this is totally normal to be experiencing what you're experiencing right now. Um, you even see it in grocery stores when you go in right now to a grocery store and you're just picking up a few things. Uh, no one's really talking to each other, and there's just this fe there's this feeling of weird panic. Yeah. I, you know, I've made an I I have gone out a few times. I've to I've had to go out to to the grocery store and to a few other places to to get things that I needed for my my business, and I've I've actually made it a point to to connect with people, hmm. um, and it's been interesting when when you can get get people to talk. But I, you know, a lot of people are just walking down and avoiding and, and right. going about their business. Yeah, um, I've actually been doing the same thing, especially with the cashiers. I just sort of say, are you guys hanging in there? How are you? How you been holding up? And then when I leave, I just sort of say, you know, obviously thank you and, and hang in there because I feel like that's an important message that we need to understand that I, I feel you. I feel that you've been crazy busy as a cashier and that there's a lot of anxiety. And so I just think recognizing those emotions, I mean, is that safe to say? That's huge. And, you know, and they're, they're, they're the front line as well as the medical professionals. Yet, you know, most of my visits right now I can do by video and uh, they can't. So they're, they're, in, they're in a high risk situation. For sure. I yeah. wanted to ask you, um, we kind of mentioned it a little bit, the anxiety, a little depression. What are some other emotions uh, maybe some of us are going through? Let's, let's maybe tackle adults first. What kind of things are we experiencing right now? Well, I can, I can tell you with, um, with people that I've spoken to, I've had, a, I've had to take a couple um, Uber rides recently because I'm in a different location and I didn't have my car. And... Um, in denial they one guy talked about how he's he's just in until it's really been hard for him to see and it and ex, you know un, and believe this because he doesn't know anyone that's gotten sick yet and so it's it's been a denial something that he's he, he admitted to having um anger i think people are frustrated uh as well as anxious and and feeling lonely and depressed um those are those are some of the ones that I've I've experienced just talking to people in the past couple of days. Okay, what about our kiddos? And when I say kids, um, you know, we can't really say children because you could be talking about a five-year-old versus a fifteen-year-old, and they're going through very different things right now. What yeah. what are our kids going through right now emotionally? Um, you know, I don't what i've what i've seen and i haven't i actually haven't met with many of my um adolescent or our kid clients in the past week but my own kids um my my son he's he's definitely concerned he's worried about getting it he's worried about family members getting it grandparents um and such my daughter he's 11 my daughter who's seven she's just she's not as as Question, she's not questioning things as much as him, and I think that as as long as they're not picking up the anxiety from us as a, their parents, um, you know, I haven't I haven't heard of of many younger kids experiencing that that level of anxiety or panic that the adults are having or older kids. Mm -hmm. um, that's been my experience, but it's been mostly with my own kids and my my uh, relatives. Yeah, and I'm sure as parents, that's that's hard to do, not because if, if we're feeling anxious and we don't want our children to feel anxious, I mean, they're like they're like little dogs sometimes. <laughs> they can pick up on all of our, our feelings. So how do we how do we keep that in bay at bay and keep them feeling at ease, but also be honest with them? 
Yeah, 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 that's very important because, you know, I have gone over the, you know, with my own kids, I, we, we talk about this, you know, even with my seven-year-old, the importance of hand washing. She'll go up and, you know, want to wash her hands for two seconds and be done, yet do we, where, where do we draw the line between telling them how serious this can be and, and you know, sending them into more of a anxiety panic state versus just educating them. That's, that's tough. And I think it all comes into us, us doing the things that we can do as adults, uh, to really keep ourselves grounded during this situation. And, um, and, and obviously not deny our, our feelings and emotions and distract our, don't, and completely ignore all that because that's not going to help. But to acknowledge that these are these are real emotions that we're experiencing, and the fear, the un- unknown, is so powerful. Mm-hmm. And then to find things in our lives that we can keep ourselves present for our kids and our family, and, okay. that, and that's I think the biggest thing. Um, and I heard this morning in a news report um, uh, from also a psychiatrist that deals with children as well. She mentioned parents have coping skills that we really need to reach in and find during this time. And, and she really didn't go in to explain it, but what does that essentially mean, coping skills? What are we talking about? So things that we've developed um, throughout our lives, sometimes consciously, sometimes unconsciously, uh, that help us through moments of um, stress or times of that are more stressful, uh, for, you know, and some of these are going to maybe hard to do right now because, you know, somebody may need to go to the gym and work out. And this is what, this is the only way that they've been able to, to get this, you know, this, this energy out. And now they can't go to the gym and they may not have what they're used to. So they're going to have to find other means to, to do, do things like that. The other, other examples of, of coping skills would be in, you know, in the moment where you're stressed out, what do you do? Do you, have you learned to take deep breaths, count to four? A lot of people have developed, everybody's developed coping skills throughout their lives to deal with their, what's, what's been, uh, you know, presented to them. Um, a lot of, you know, as kids, we grow up and, and learn coping skills, some of them positive, some of them not so positive. So you, you do have to be a little bit careful it, it just occurred to me, should we, especially as adults, look back at an instant, instance where we were super stressed out or we were incredibly sad and look back and go, how did I get through that again? Yeah. I mean, is that, is that a, a yeah. safe? Okay. Yeah, that's definitely something you can do. Try to remember as a kid what it was like to be in situations that were, you know, well, I mean, 9-11, we could, I mean, this isn't the same, right? This has never really happened before in our, in, in any, anywhere close to, I guess, 100 years ago, right? So, but 9-11 would be an example of, of what people did during that time to kind of come together and um, deal with what was going on. This is obviously different. Okay. Um, but a, is there similar that con- it affected so many people. Right, right. Is there a concern at all? of, you know, if this continues, which the predictions are that, you know, we will be seeing um, more of the chaos. We, we could see be, be seeing more cases, more social distancing orders. Um, if this goes on for another few weeks, is there any concern with the future and our mental state in, in the future, like kind of a PTSD type of thing? I don't want to be yeah. dramatic, but. No, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a, that's a good question. Um, um, I think for, for, for a lot of us, we're going to go back to how things were, but they're going to be a, a, a portion of the population that, that this isn't going to go away, especially depending on how many people are actually affected by this, um, COVID-19 pandemic, not just uh, obviously economically and losing their jobs and being isolated, but also by people dying or getting sick around them. Um, it just, it's so hard to, to know. And then, you, then I go back to that fear of unknown. Um, I've, I've been asking uh, people that I work with 
you know, what, what they're thinking about this. And, um, one, you know, the long-term effects of isolation. So there's a lot of people that are living alone right now. They don't have immediate support in their family or, you know, in their, where they live. Um, and it's really important to stay connected, uh, virtually to people. There's a lot of things going on on social media. Um, there's free workshops that people can do to get connected. Um, I do worry about the long-term implications of this isolation for people who are susceptible to depression already mm. and what that could look like the longer they're stuck alone. Right. Um, and I, I wrote down in my notes uh, yesterday, among mental health professionals, is there a fear we could see suicide rates go up during this and after this? I, you know, I, I think, I, I think that's, that's fair to, to think that way. I think that it, the, the suicide rates could increase. Um, I think, I think it happened more after and mm -hmm. just thinking about how everybody's so preoccupied with what is going on in this moment. Um, and then things will hit them later, especially if they, you know, how if we if we can't get the assistance from the government that we that people desperately need, um, and what are they going to do to pay their bills? Um, depression gets worse. They're alone. Yeah, definitely. Right. I, and you mentioned it. I think now is the time for us to be connected and watch out for those signs, those early signs of of that. Because as you said, there's a lot of people who live alone and and are already going through a lot right now. Yeah. Well, then you also get families together who, let, let's say, one of the parents, um, I mean, I've been guilty of this myself. Whenever I get stressed out, I tend to to put a lot of energy into work. Um, and, you know, they don't have that ability right now, and so they're home. And, you know, is, is alcohol use or drug use going to go up? Are we going to see more domestic abuse going on during these really stressful times when people just don't know what to do. And, you know, you're more likely to take out anger on the people that are around you. And so I don't know the answer to, to whether or not that's going to happen, but that's a concern that I have and what, what to do about it. Um, really, um, it, it, that's going to be a hard thing to navigate through these coming weeks and months if, if this continues. Yeah, it seems like now we need to be connected as much as as possible, even more so before all of this chaos. More so. Well, and you know, this is, I was watching a Netflix special not too long ago after this had already started and it was a, a comedian and he was talking about how we needed something really big in this world to bring us together. Um, and this is, we could look at this as, as an opportunity as well of, we need to come together. Mm -hmm. We need to stop this party line crap and really come together and support humans and not um, based on what our beliefs are. This is a world issue and it's a world mental health issue as well, not just a, you know, a virus pandemic, this is affecting everybody. Or exactly. It will. Exactly. Is there anything we can be doing? And we kind of touched on a few things. Anything we can be doing right now in the moment today, this afternoon, like what can we do to help either alleviate our own stress or help help someone who needs that? I, one of the things that I keep hearing and it and keep, it makes so much sense to me is you really have to be careful what you're feeding your your mind right now and your your body too um do you you know if we're sitting and i caught, caught myself i catch myself doing this all the time you know just looking at news re around the virus and what what's going to happen what's and you get all this this stuff coming in we really have to work on not just feeding ourselves with that keeping informed is very important not saying to cut yourself off from it. Some people may need to do that or may decide to do that. Uh, but just to, to be open to other things and, um, you know, have a daily schedule. If, you know, I think that's important for some people that, that are so used to having a schedule and now they don't. Um, 
where you you incorporate several different things that you can throughout the day that could potentially help you manage your stress, manage your, your depression. Um, there, there are, I know on YouTube and there are other places you could probably find these. You can, there's yoga, there's, there's Tai Chi, there's Qi Gong that people can do. There's meditation exercises that you can learn. This is a perfect time to start up a meditation practice. Um, learn an instrument that you wanted to uh, learn a new language, read books that you've always wanted to read that you didn't have the time to do. Put other things in that are not just going to further, you know, uh, it fuel this flame that's going on inside of us, this mm. fear. Yeah. And looking forward to the future, keeping up with that routine, obviously, anything else yeah. that we can be doing in, in the future, um, you know, I, I asked you this yesterday, should we be looking a few weeks out, a month out? Yeah, I think you, can you be a little more specific with looking, looking at what? So today, so for instance, there are things we can be doing today. I think the routine is a brilliant idea, especially if you have, have children. What should we be doing in the future, I guess? So keeping up with that routine or making sure we have kind of a regimented schedule yeah, I mean, there's could I, you know, some flexibility in the schedule too. Um, I I think that, you know, looking at the future, planning ahead for things that could come is hard right now because there's so much unknown. We don't know when we're going to go back to work yet. I mean, if you own a small business, there's there's options out there for you to help keep you afloat so you're not going under. I don't know how well that's going to pan out, but things like you know. Thinking about that stuff too and planning ahead for that is important, uh, but it is important to these. For let me, real quick, let me let me stop for a second because one of the I want to talk about mindfulness meditation really quick, and I think this is a really important um, thing to for people to hear. I'm not an expert on mindfulness uh, my, mindfulness meditation. I I practice it. I'm not as not as much as I could practice it, and I'm hoping. To, to get that in my daily schedule on a more regular basis. Um, any it, Anything that you do where you can pay attention to one thing at a time, um, like your breath, like um, listening to a song, um, sweeping the floor, um, qi gong or tai chi, where you're actually doing movements are, are good for some people because they have trouble just sitting down. But you're building these connections in your brain that are helping to rewire your brain uh, to help deal with moments like this that, that are that are stressful. And if you if you develop a sustained mindfulness practice, um, whatever that is for you, and there you can look this up. There's tons of stuff out there that would be considered a mindfulness practice. It doesn't have to be sitting down trying to make your mind go blank because that's not what it's about. It's about focusing on one thing at a time, and you're going to improve, you know, studies have shown that it improves um, your inflammatory response. It improves your mood, your anxiety. There's so many different things it does, but it has to be a sustained practice. It can't be where I practice breathing once a week. It needs to be daily. Hmm. Uh, more than once a day is, is even better. Um, it, that's something that I really recommend people do right now is try to find something like that. Um, and then that's something that you can plan for and and continue. Right. And and taking care of not only our minds, but our bodies, too. This is an incredibly important time, not only for our immune health, but um, more than ever, we should be getting enough sleep. We should be eating, eating better, um, you know, because all of the all of that plays in together. Yeah, it does. It does. It's so important. I mean, I, I and I'm sitting here on uh, on six hours of sleep last night. Um, <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> yeah, well, not not by choice. Um, it's a busy time. Um, it, sleep is so important. Uh, the the food that we put in our body is so important. Nutrition is so important. Spirituality is so important. All of it is crucial right now. More crucial right now than maybe at other times. Uh, because we just, as a whole, I mean, people that go through, I have patients that, you know, this is how they are all the time. They're, they always live in a, a state of catastrophizing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's been interesting. 
I can't, I think 90% of, of them have told me, um, I actually am not that panicked right now. I, I was more panicked a month ago when I thought, you know, I was having a heart attack from a panic attack, but now that there's this, there's this tangible thing that's there and they're seeing everybody else go through what they go through on a daily basis. They've a lot of people have actually just, that has settled down for them. Mm. Um, it's been, that's been an interesting thing that I, I didn't actually, I wasn't expecting, but makes sense now when I talk to them about it, I was expecting certain clients to come in and just be in panic and, and they're actually as calm or calmer than, than me. That's super interesting uh, to hear. Yeah. And good. That's, that's some yeah. a, a nice little light of good news. Um, what are your thoughts too on alcohol use? I know a lot of people are feeling that stress more so than ever. They come home from work or they've had a long day with the kids and they want to unwind with, with a glass of wine. Is that something that's smart and safe to do right now? Well, I mean, in moderation, if, if you're not, if that's not something that is a, a big problem for you, then, then it, it may be an okay thing for people. It's definitely a risky road to take, um, depending on your history, family history, and um, how much that person is mm -hmm. consuming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. But I know, I'm, I'm sure, I mean, people are at home all day now, right? So it's not like they have to wait to get home from work. Yeah, so that, I mean, there, yeah. you've seen that on social media, just some of the funny, funnier things that people are putting out there, you know, day two of quarantine, mimosas at 10 a.m. Um, and it's it, yeah. it's funny, and, and I understand it's being lighthearted, but that is that that is a serious issue. It could be. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, and, and other, other things as well. I mean, um, you know, cannabis use too. In, in all honesty, when people are, you know, dabbing, using these dab pens that have 80% THC in them all day long, that can, there's some problems that can arise from that as well. For sure. So we just have to be, we have to be careful and, and try to, uh, to maintain, to try to do other things that are going to help us with our stress and, and not go to those things as a first line coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Um, I do have a few questions. Some of my uh, viewers and listeners sit in, before I get to that, one last question from me. This has been weighing super heavy on me, just thinking about uh, really all of those high school students, especially uh, especially the seniors who prom is, is, has gone, graduation is probably gone, tournaments and sports games that they were looking forward to are gone. That's hard, that's a hard pill to swallow. Huge, I mean, the South Medford high school girls um, basketball team, weren't they like number one? And I don't know for sure. I think that they're pretty high ranked in the state, going to go to the state tournament and then it just gets yanked out from under them. Um, that's tough. I mean, my kids both play soccer at Rogue Valley Timbers and right now that's on hold. I know all the premier players, classic players, rec players, they need to be doing stuff. And, you know, I know certain organizations are reaching out and, um, and you know, giving kids ideas on what they can do to keep up skills, and mm -hmm. I think that's important. But your your point about high school seniors, I think, is huge. Um, I, I recently had a high school senior saying that they would repeat, they would repeat next year just to have that uh, option uh, mm -hmm. opportunity to to play sports one more year and and go to state. It's so heartbreaking. As a parent, what do you tell what do you tell those seniors? I mean. Sometimes I feel like I'm sorry, just, ugh, it just doesn't cut it. No, I, I tell them how effed up it is. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine what they're going through right now. I could, there's nothing that, that has happened in my life. I know I, I have patients that this has happened to where, you know, anxiety has gotten in the way of, of them continuing school. And so they, you know, they've had experiences like this, um, but really just trying to empathize with them as best I, I can. And just, uh, there's really, there's really not a, a saying you're sorry, isn't going to cut it. You're right. It's true, true empathizing with people during this, this time that's going to help them and, and giving them options of what they can do to cope with what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And like, giving well, them the an, stuff, an avenue uh, to let out that anger too. Sounds like. Anger. Yep. Okay. 
Um, all right, well, we had a couple of really good questions. I'm gonna pull them up here okay. on my phone. Uh, here's a really good one. For those who suffer anxiety, depression, OCD already, you've kind of hit on this a little bit, any tips or coping tools for keeping it together during these uncertain, unstructured times? Loss of control and structure is a huge issue, particularly for those who struggle with mental illness. Yeah, I mean, if you have a therapist, try to schedule with your therapist, you know, on a regular basis. I know that there's a lot of people out there, there's a, a, a portion of people out there that are already in, in care, right? Mm -hmm. And they have therapists, they have providers that they're meeting with on a fairly regular basis or weekly, but there's a huge portion of the population out there that is currently not in with therapists. And it's not like there's, you know, openings jump, you know, all over the place for people to get in. We're already overwhelmed and, and, um, which makes it really hard to get people, even even clients of my own that are struggling, to get them in on an on a on an emergency basis. It's tough if they're not already in the schedule. Um, so again, I think finding things online that can help you cope and and starting up this. I, I'm going back to the mindfulness practice. I know this is really it sounds simple, and I know it's really hard for some people to do. But mindfulness meditation is something that you can find online and learn online. Connect with people you you know that have been supports for you in the past and talk keep keep in connection with people virtually if if that's the only way to do it right now, obviously that's the safest way to do it. Um, I've also been told that there's a lot of uh, these you know live workshops that are out there for people that maybe, Maybe there is some stuff out there uh, that is geared towards mental health and helping people cope through this time. Okay. Uh, but look, look, don't look online. See what you can find. Call, call therapists to see if they're they're taking new patients. I know there are some that are taking patients, but I don't, I don't know, you know, the the best way to find them. You're just gonna, have, unfortunately, the best way is probably just to call. Yeah. Reach out. Know, reach out. You reach gotta out. reach out. Okay. Uh, what is an age appropriate way to discuss what's happening right now with our children and how do you talk to them? We've, we have touched on this a little bit, but again, if you have small kids at home, you know, do you just say, oh, everything's fine? Right. Why is daddy home from work all the time? <laughs> Why are you guys here all day long? Why aren't you going to, to, to your job every day? Why are you home with us? Um, yeah, I mean, it, you're talking about like school, non-school. They're talking about non-school age children, maybe, because school age children are going to have some idea that something's going on, right? For sure. So, so yeah, what's yeah? I guess what is an age appropriate way to discuss what's happening right now with our children I, and of all ages, I guess. Yeah, you know, I think it just it's different. It's so different depending on the developmental age of your kid. Um, I think that's a an important thing to think about. Um, some 12 year olds can, you know, kind of be more developmentally six or seven. So you really have to gear your um, communication to them uh, based on their developmental age. I, I would say with, with younger kids, um, just working with them on the normal things that you would work with them during the flu season on how to cough in your, your arm and those kind of things. How do you explain to them that you know you're what's going on and and why you're why you're home that's a tough one i don't know if i have the right answer mm -hmm. for that question well it um, also sounds like too you have to talk to younger children differently than you would talk to your teenage children oh definitely yeah yeah i mean teenagers all know what's going on anyway they you know we tend to think as teenagers that we're invincible and so that's a hard thing to to get to some of them i think um uh, but they do need to, they need to be aware of the potential consequences of them catching the coronavirus and then spreading it to somebody that they love. Mm -hmm. And it's probably best to keep grandparents isolated as much as possible right now. For sure. That was um, the psychiatrist that was on CBS this morning, this morning basically said, you know, if your five-year-old is saying, why can't we see grandma right now? You don't want to say because she's high risk. <laughs> Just, you know, you don't want to say those words. You could, 
you could kill her. <laughs> exactly. Don't, don't say that. Don't say that. Um, yeah, you know, you know, that's something my, my family is dealing with right now. And I, I honestly don't know how they, what they've told, um, you know, one of their grand, their, their great grandkids who they spend a lot of time with. That's something I'll have to, to, to talk to them about too, and see what they, the way that they, it's like, what happens, what do you do when you tell, when, you know, you're explaining to your four year old that you're not going to be able to see your uncle who passed away, you know, mm -hmm. this is they're tough, tough things to talk about with your kids. Well, we're you learning to too. Huh? Say again. I'm sorry. We're, we're learning too, as we go. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then a final question for you. How can you exercise your mind to stay mentally fit? This is a good one too for a lot of those people, adults who are at home all day. Brain games. There's apps that you can, you can work your brain, you can work your mind. Mindfulness is a way of doing that too. And all these brain games are kind of, they're a form of mindfulness when you're focused in on one thing. Um, there's a lot of apps, there's stuff online um, there you can I you can order stuff I'm sure online to that if, if people don't want to use technology which is something that's important for you know that I haven't even mentioned but I mean how, there's some people out there that don't have access to to computers and stuff so how are they gonna order stuff online how are they gonna watch YouTube they don't have an, they don't have internet so uh, those are if you know you have relatives like that you, we need to step up and help them or friends like that we need mm -hmm. to step up and make sure that they're getting the connections that they need we need to be calling them we need to be getting things for them to do at home um whatever whatever it is that they you know that that books new books any kind of brain games that you can get that you can play as a family at home that would be kind of good you know any board games that you guys can get into just family we i mean what how how many families sit around and eat dinner together? This is maybe a great opportunity to reconnect mm. with our family values that we have gotten away from because of this crazy world we live in. And this is another, this potentially could be an opportunity to start back up uh, family game night, but, and maybe do it three times a week instead of once a year now, you know? Yeah. Good call. Uh, really good call. Connect, you know, cause one thing we could do is, you know, it's easy to, to let your kids just, go and play video games this whole time and and I'm I'm over here on doing my stuff and they're over there and we really have to be careful about that. Start a Dungeons and Dragons campaign with your kids if you're into that <laughs> kind of stuff. Whatever. I love it. Um, we also need to be incredibly mindful of uh, the first responders we have in our life, the doctors, the nurses, the paramedics. Um, these guys are truly on the front lines of this, and they're going to be going through a lot of uh, mental illness possibly within the next few weeks. Yeah, and, and and you mentioned earlier, you know, PTSD from this, and it's going to be really important for them to be getting the help that they need, talking to people, the support that they need um, for the aftermath of, of what of what may happen, and and you know, the response to that. Okay. Um, any closing remarks, Chad? I mean, I, I, f I feel like the biggest message I got from you today is just that it's okay. It's okay to feel all of these crazy things that we're feeling. It's, it's just fine. That is, that is very true. Um, and that, that's important to remind ourselves and to just reconnect with your family, reconnect with, keep connected with your family if you're already connected with your friends um, stay connected. Uh, let's work together on this because we're all in this together. And the more we split apart, uh, the, the more damage this is going to do long-term, I think. For sure. All right. Chad Brown, pediatric and adult psychiatrist from Path to Awareness. I so appreciate you taking the time out today to chat with us. Um, I think the other big thing is if people are dealing with, with some things that they're not sure how to deal with, they need to reach out online and see if they can find some resources as well. Yeah. And then if they don't have online, there's, there's, there's number, if you know that people, if you know that there's people that are struggling, that don't have the ability to reach out online, please reach out and help, help your family members and friends. Mm -hmm. Check we in. All need stuff. 
Yeah. Yeah. Check in. Check in. Okay. Not not just with others, but also check in with yourself. It's important to check in with ourselves and see how we're doing, because we could we can get going and we can get going and helping everybody else, and then, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're we're exhausted and done, and we haven't even eaten lunch. Exactly. All right. Very good advice. If you are watching this podcast, you can check it out, ktbl.com. It's on um, under features. It's also on YouTube. And if you're listening to this podcast on Apple's podcast app, please subscribe, rate, and review. It helps other people find us. We're also on Google Play and Stitcher and SoundCloud. One more time, Chad Brown, pediatric and adult psychiatrist. Thank you so much. Good advice. Really good information today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me.